Good afternoon and <clears throat> welcome to our, our worship this morning as we gather to continue our uh, conversations around faith practices uh, here on our Wednesday uh, time together. Uh, just a reminder, we continue to do this on Wednesdays at noon and um, for, uh, we're a little late today because we had some video troubles and internet problems, but glad that you hung with us and joined us. Uh, we also will be uh, on, Wednesday, on Sunday mornings at 930 so uh, please join us on those days and watch uh, now that we are able to, to, the regulations have relaxed and the guidelines so that we can meet again uh, in person. Uh, we are putting things together and we'll be sending that information out. But we will continue to do these online so that you'll be able to join us from wherever you might be. So we give thanks for that. So let us begin this day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, help us to walk the ways of justice and love. Teach us to love our neighbors and to care for all your creation by following the example of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So our two readings for this day as we um, contemplate this Idea, this practice of, of service. The first comes from the uh, book of Micah. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And then from the Gospel of John in the 10th chapter. James and John, the son of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Jesus said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right and one at your left hand, in your glory. Jesus said, that, said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink, or to be baptized with the baptism I baptize with? They replied, We are able. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and the baptism by which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those to whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them all together, and he said to them, You know among you the Gentiles and those whom you recognize as lords, rulers lord it over them. <clears throat> But the great ones and the tyrants rule over them. But it is not for you. Whoever wishes to be great among you must also be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the, man, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. <coughs> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I said this week, it's about the practice of service or serving. Yet it is in service, in serving others, it is not always something that, that we want to do or think we can do or even understand that's who we are as a child of God, as a part of a being a follower of Christ, that we have been called to serve. Micah 6, 8, our first reading, one of my favorite verses reminds us, right? What does the Lord require? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. It's about serving others whenever and in doing so we fulfill that which the Lord requires of us. But even in our time of isolation, our time of separation, our time outside of the church building, we are still church. We are still church because we are still been about service, serving our neighbors, serving others who are in need, serving the most vulnerable among us. And even by when we get back together, the all the practices that we're going to ask of you and, and the society ask of us, of wearing masks and being social distancing. It's about serving others, caring for others. 
We are the church, the body of Christ, working to serve others in the name of Jesus. So we continue to do the work, even outside this church building. Because that's what the Lord requires, that we serve others and walk humbly with our God. We're often reminded in the Gospels that Jesus says, I came to not to serve, to be served, but to serve. Yet the disciples didn't understand. They didn't seem to understand until after his death and his resurrection that they too had been called to serve and been sent to serve in his name. In our reading from Mark, it's the, the sons of, of Zebedee, James and John, who along with Peter were like the three uh, right, hand, right, you know, the three people that Jesus often turned to, who, who Jesus often took them, places he didn't take the other disciples, like up on the mountain on the time of his transfiguration. For the sons of Zebedee, for James and for John and for Peter, they were like, I guess in our own terms, you know, they were like his vice presidents or his executive committee or whatever kind of term you want to put on it in these days. They were the people Jesus turned to most as we get it from the scriptures. They were the ones who, who helped Jesus do the things that Jesus were doing, of serving, of caring. But yet they continued to see and understand this idea of power in the way that they saw it in their culture and their understanding. They wanted to be next in line. They wanted to sit at his right hand and his left. And when Jesus said, well, can you do, can you, un, can you withgo the things that I'm going to do? Can you, and can you, will you be baptized with the baptism of fire that I'm going to be baptized with? And in their arrogance, they said, yes, we can. But they didn't know what they were agreeing to. And in the end, Jesus, for Jesus, like men and, and all of his disciples, they all would endure a similar fate. The similar fate that Jesus had to suffer. But their request, they did not understand all that would happen. They didn't understand what was about to happen, let alone what would be happening for them. Because they thought that Jesus was there to help usher in this new kingdom, and the only kingdom they understood was the kingdom like the one they saw in their world, with a ruler, an emperor, a king sitting, and on his right and on his left were his two main people that he turned to who also had as much or just about as much power as the king or the emperor who would do things in their name. They had, the, they had the prestige and the power. They had the visual. And James and John wanted that for themselves because they thought that, that the kingdom would be much like what the kingdom they always understood, like King David. Jesus would sit on David's throne and he would have one at his right and left and one who would do all their bidding and they would be the next in line if should something happen to Jesus. But Jesus sets them straight. In the new kingdom, new rules, the way authority would be dispersed and, and, and handed out would be so different than what they thought and what they expected. The new world would not would be totally upside down from what they what they wanted. In this new world, they would the, the, to be powerful would not to be considered lords or or rulers, but to be living as servants in service to others. Today is no different. We often think about rulers and leaders, government, whether in government or in business or however you want to say, we, we look at those people who are in charge and we sometimes desire to be like them or, be, or with them. But think about those who are in charge, whether in government or in business or your, wherever it is that you work. Who is it that you want to follow? Some of them, some of our leaders believe and think and act like dictators. They act selfishly in their own interest, but the good ones continue to seek to serve others, to keep the interest of the whole, the country, the state, or the company foremost in their decisions. And that way they are serving others. And they set the example for us to follow, just as we are called to serve others, just as we are called to follow the example that Jesus set. And that way we continue to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. But often we don't think we have anything to offer, any ways in which we serve. Serving and act and 
Serving and caring for others, though, are limitless opportunities, especially when you don't put when you don't expect anything in return. There are many ways we serve in our community across, across uh, the time, sharing our talents and our gifts, whether it's in worship with music and song or reading or leading, or it's just out in the community doing the things you do, serving others. We never know sometimes the way in which our service touches the lives of someone else. I was thinking about about that, <clears throat> and like, um, like the quilts you see in front of us, the quilts here are for our seniors who are going to take them as they leave to go on to college, but uh, our quilters also put quilts together that go to Lutheran World Relief. And like um, here at Central, the church I served in, the, in my previous call also did quilts, and we sent them to Lutheran World Relief and to uh, other places to be sent uh, to use in disasters. Next to that church was a boys' group home for, for uh, young men in, in mostly junior high, high school age who were in trouble in, in from the bigger cities and they got sent out to, to Platteville and there they, they were you know, getting some counseling and help but they also needed some acts of service. And so whenever we had something that we needed help with, we would invite those boys to come and help serve. And so we were loading up boxes of quilts to go to Lutheran World Relief along with a lot of kits and things that we packed uh, that would go to help as well. This was a few years ago, so they came over and they helped us ho load up a, a, a cattle trailer full of boxes, full of quilts, full of health kits and other items that were being sent. A couple of the boys didn't really know what they were doing. They just thought it was something that they had to go do to do fulfill their service opportunity. But in talking to them, I shared about what was going on, what was happening. And, you know, they just heard it as quilt, something that they know that they put on their bed to keep them warm or sleep with, under. But I shared about how these quilts are more than that to the people who get them. Because quilts go for them in Lutheran World Relief and other places. They go to places in Africa and India and South America. They go to places of disaster, even in the United States. And often, particularly in, in, in other countries, these quilts become more than just something that's put on a bed. They become the warmth in a, in a, in a cold night. They become a, a, a floor mat for people to sit on and sit in their tent. They become walls between spaces within those places. They become that one thing that keeps them warm. They become more than just that blanket on a bed. And as we talked, a couple of the boys really kind of realized that it was more than just doing this act of service. And I reminded them that, you know, their handprints, their fingerprints were on those boxes, and those boxes were going to go to far-fung places, places that they themselves would never go. But yet, at the same time, they would go, because that's where their handprints, their fingerprints would be. A part of them would go with those boxes to Africa, to India, or to Central America. I think at that time, um, it was one of the times of a drought or, or a famine or something over in Africa, and so we knew that some, many of them were going to go there. So we talked about how what they did was going to care and help for someone halfway around the world. A couple of them left really amazed at something that they did, something they did for someone they'll never see because they're used to, to doing things for others, but it was always that kind of, you do something for me and I'll do something for you. This would be something that they, they would never know who they touched. They would never get anything back in return. But that's what service does. Practice of service, practice of, practices of, of doing acts of kindness, of mercy, in works of love, finding ways in which to serve makes a difference not only in the lives of the others, but in your life as well. Especially when they're done not for personal accolades, not for any return that you might get, not for any self-interest, but done for the sake of the other, done in service to others and for others, and done in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to sing our hymn for today, uh, We Are Called.
we would continue this day with our prayers um, as we pray for those who um, are in need this day. Each of the petitions end with, God of unity, hear us, and your response, your mercy is great. In this troubling time of separation, we pray to you, O God, for the unity of the church. Bind us together in the truth of your gospel. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Nurture the life of your creation. Support those who explore the mysteries of your universe. We praise you for all the scientists and those who enrich the under, our, our understanding of creation. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Come to the aid of all who suffer. We pray for those who are laden with grief, overwhelmed by anxiety, struggling without medical care. Uphold all health care workers. Comfort families and friends of those who cannot be with their loved ones. We give all into your care, the sick and those we name before you now. God of unity, hear us. In your mercy, your mercy is great. We pray for peace throughout the world. Shield the vulnerable who live in paths of violence. Grant your oneness to humankind. So marked by isolation and division. Bring harmony to families gangs and distraught citizens, racial groups and members of legislatures. Give to each individual a wholeness that is birthed in you. Make us one as you are one. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. To know you is to have eternal life. With bold confidence in your love, merciful God, we pray, place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We join together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessings of the, all, of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and sustain you and keep you from all harm and fill you with all courage. Amen. For Christ is risen just as he said. Live in God's peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.